All right, hello, fun, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Eskindar Aerospace mod, which is being made by forum user Eskindar. And what this glorious little piece of fork looks to add into the game is a fair few parts to actually make kerbalized versions of Cold War aircraft, which is pretty darn cool. So let's jump right on into the space plane hangar and have a look at what we do get. Now let's grab ourselves a Mark II cockpit for size comparison's sake, and then turn on our mod filter just leaving on Eskandar Heavy Industries. And take a look at our first part here, which, um... Is actually not a uh, command pod, despite being in the command pods category. And that is the radio biome sensor. And this, if we pop it onto the back, there is just a nice little bubble of a dome for you to either attach to your nose cone or perhaps some sort of tail boom, and it will produce a biome analysis experiment. So uh, yeah, I think just a bug as to why it's currently in here rather than in science, but hey, there it is. Now, after this one, we actually do have quite a number of command pods here, and I'm not going to go over all of the stats for them because, well, there's 17 command pods, and each of them does have built into it a data transmitter, a reaction wheel, a crew report, and some form of electric charge. So I'm only going to go over what things are different about each, because otherwise, well, it's going to take a while to go through all those. They all got them. They all have the standard features. So let's start with, uh, fittingly, considering the Mark II cockpit here, and that is an uh, SR-71 Mark II cockpit, which is beautiful. A bit longer than our standard Mark II and a little bit less sleek looking, but still a very cool nonetheless. I, I actually like kind of the sharp angles on this thing. A very cool looking overall. Now this will hold two Kerbals inside with a minimum of one to operate and does have its own lifting surface, being of course a Mark II style fuselage, as well as having some mono propellant along with the standard features, which is pretty good. So let's um, jump on to the next, which is the A4 cockpit, a nice smaller one here, and only holding one Kerbal, minimum of one to operate, and other than that, the standard features, but a very good looking one nonetheless. Not quite as detailed as some of the others we'll see here in a moment, but still very good looking. And then we have the AV-8 cockpit here with a little bit more detailing. I do like the front of the nose cone there. Very cool. And this one once more holding one Kerbal with a minimum of one to operate and then the standard features. Now, uh, next in line, we have the F-11 cockpit here, which is gorgeous. One of my favorites on here, and as you can tell, it has its own built-in air intakes, but along with that, it will, of course, hold one Kerbal, minimum of one to operate, has the standard features, and then, like I said, that air intake, as well as two different variants, either this a standard stock-alike version, or if you want a more scary fighter plane version, you can have yourself a nice angry-looking cockpit. And uh, there you go. Now let's check that one off, and then have a look at the F-14 cockpit. Um, Another good looking one there, very cool. And holding two Kerbals this time with a minimum of one to operate. Other than that, the standard features, but does have three variants, the stock alike, a production version, and then a danger zone version. So like with the last one, you can have an angry looking cockpit and who doesn't want that? Now let's pop that out and then head to the F4 cockpit. Some good detailing on this one. I do very much enjoy it. Holding two Kerbals on the interior, a minimum of one to operate. And besides that, the standard features. Now next we have the M2K cockpit here. Some good features. I do like those bits coming off of the bottom there, but all in all, nice cockpit. Holding one Kerbal, minimum of one to operate, and then the standard features. 
Now next we have the A3 cockpit here, uh, changing up the fighter style a bit into this. I do like it. Very nice, unique uh, cockpit up there. Nice bit of a uh, flat nose to the front. And this one holding three Kerbals on the interior, a minimum of one to operate. But other than that, the standard features. Now next we have the A7 cockpit, one of the more unique ones on here and very nice looking. Now this one holds one Kerbal, a minimum of one to operate. Operate, has the standard features, but also, as you probably would have guessed, an air intake. Always useful. Now next we have the F111 cockpit, and that's, uh, oh boy, quite a long one there. And a very good, a very sleek looking, I mean, with how pointed it is, kind of dart-like. And this one will hold two Kerbals on the interior, minimum of one to operate, and then the standard features. Now next we have the RB66, which will actually hold three Kerbals inside. Minimum of one to operate. We're getting into some larger territory here. And this one has the standard features, but also has curb net access on this one, unlike the others. Uh, but beyond that, yeah, the, the standard things. But yeah, very good looking. I do like that one. We then have the S2 cockpit here, a bit more uh, stout than some of the others we've had thus far, but holds four Kerbals on the inside. A minimum of one to operate. Has the standard features beyond that and then we have the s3 cockpit again a bit more stubby of one but i do like the much larger uh, glass cockpit there holding four kerbals on the interior minimum of one to operate has the standard features but also curb net access so there we go we can pop that one off and then we have the c130 for all your cargo needs and uh yeah that's uh that's a good one very nicely made holds five kerbals in total minimum of of one to operate has the standard features beyond that. Then we have the C-17 cockpit, a bit larger, and yet, despite being larger, actually holds less Kerbals than the C-130 at only three, with a minimum of one to operate, and then has the standard features otherwise. Again, though, very good looking, very nicely made. We then have, I believe, probably my favorite two cockpits in this, the first being the V-22, another more stout one, but I do like the cockpit there and some of the finer details. And this one holds a two Kerbals on the interior, a minimum of one to operate, and then the standard features. And then after that, we have, I think my favorite, the SH-3, which... Oh yeah, look at all those windows. I really do like that. Very unique looking. I like the details. And holds four Kerbals on the inside, a minimum of one to operate, and then the other standard features. So all in all, pretty darn cool. Now, let's head down to the engines category, where we have uh, the next series of parts, and the first being a nice helicopter rotor. If you'd like uh, the T-58 King main rotor, uh, there we are. A very darn good looking and will produce up to 329 kilonewtons of thrust with air intake and liquid fuel does have an alternator producing four electric charge per second has four degrees of gimbling range a built-in reaction wheel and even its own air intake which is pretty handy and we do also have another helicopter rotor with the T-50 Heron. And let's pop that one on. And this one a bit more unique in design, as you can see. And this one only producing 171 kilonewtons of thrust, having four electric charge per second on the alternator. And then two degrees of gimbling, does have a reaction wheel, and once more a built-in air intake. And then we have a more traditional uh, plane engine in the AE 1107C Explorer engine. And this thing, oh, I like it. It's a really nice looking engine, quite large blades there. And this one will produce 131 kilonewtons of thrust, the alternator producing 10 electric charge per second. It'll use air intake and liquid fuel, has a built-in reaction wheel. And of course, as you probably guessed from that right there, has its own air intake. And then next, if we actually ditch the cockpits, we have two different nozzles, which uh, I really wish would be able to be radially attached, but no, as you can see here, they uh, they don't like going on anything 
a button attachment node. And the first one we have is the F402F Pegasus nozzle, producing 65 kilonewtons of thrust with air intake and liquid fuel, and also producing four electric charge. And then we then have the F402R Pegasus nozzle, which is a little bit more sleeker looking than the other, and uh, producing the same amount of thrust though, and same on the alternator. And then after that, we have nothing else. And no, oh, actually, no, I skipped over this one. In Command and Control, we have a control rotor, which actually serves as an RCS, but looks like, you know, a rotor. Perfect for a tail rotor on your helicopters. So there we are. We have that. And then we have nothing in any of these categories until we make it all the way down to the bottom of the list in utility where we have a number of different cargo fuselages now most of them not all of them will also hold some form of liquid fuel uh the exception being the ramps so uh yeah i won't be mentioning the fuel on them we'll just be taking a look at the different sizes of uh cargo fuselages we have but keep that in mind the ramps don't hold fuel the fuselages do and we'll start with the 1.875 cargo fuselage where we have a full-sized one right here nice and hollow for your cargo needs and then we have a uh, smaller sort of half size well maybe two-thirds sized one there and then uh, the tube C being an even smaller variant right there quite handy for all of them for different sizes we then also have a two fuselage cargo bays the B1 version as well as the B2 version the difference between the two is that the B1 has your logo on the side, but other than that, it is a solid cargo door, and the B2 has these windows instead. Now, no matter which one you do choose, they do have individually controllable doors on either side, which is quite handy to have. You can control each rather than both, which I do enjoy. Very nice for any helicopters, perhaps. And then we have the 1.875 meter cargo fuselage large ramp which we can pop right on there and uh is quite a long but hey usable ramp which is always good so let's pop that off now we still do have a couple more 1.875 parts and we have three adapters here where we have the a adapter which is a more long elongated cone style of thing we then have the b adapter which rather than being conical sort of tapers upward and then we have the sh3 which which goes from uh, the 1.8725, or 1.875 rather, to uh, similarly to the more, actually kind of in between the conical and the tapered up, but also has this little bit at the bottom. There we go, nice and good there. And then after that, we move into some larger sizes, which is always fun. And the first here being the 3.75 meter cargo fuselage. And uh, yeah, that's... Uh, Oh, come on, attach the thing. There it is. And uh, yeah, quite a large cargo bay. In fact, look at that. You can fit the entire Mark II cockpit on the inside. Now, the next part here is supposed to be the tube G for this size, but as you can see, that's actually not quite the right one. Uh, that is in fact a three meter size one. So that's one currently is mislabeled. And why I bring that up is because there's supposed to be a three meter tube down here which is also three meters. So I think that this is uh, an incorrect model at the moment. So hopefully that does get fixed to the proper 3.75 version. But uh, other than that, for the 3.75, we do have the H tube, which is a little bit smaller than the uh, full on tube there. We then move down to the uh, three meter category where we have the longer version, the not quite so long version, and this one actually being the proper short sized version and then of course we have two more fuselage ramps one being for the uh, three meter size there and the other being for also the three meter size but as you can see uh slightly mislabeled again this one is in fact the 3.75 meter as you can tell so yes just a few minor things here and there with some naming conventions and one command pod being up here that's not actually command pod but other than that some very good parts and i'm sure those things will all be fixed soon so let's go take a look at the stuff in the world and first we're actually going to look at something i started building until i realized that um yeah it uh it really didn't serve a purpose anymore 
And oh my, where'd it go? Uh, I appear to, ah, there it is, there it is. I was about to say, I, I did save that, right? I was going to display all of the different cockpits out in the world, and we're still actually gonna go out there just to get another sort of view of them. But my intent was to show off the internal views for these, but sadly, right now, this mod does not hold any internal views for these gorgeous cockpits. I mean, look at all these things. They are just seriously good looking. Now, don't worry, the IVAs are going to be coming. Uh, the mod maker has, in fact, on the page for this mod, released a few images of uh, the SR-71 IVA that's currently being worked on. So those will be coming eventually, and I hope soon. But uh, yeah, even on their own, these are awesome and highly usable cockpits to really have a lot of fun with. Now let's uh, actually just head to the space center and load up an, an airplane I actually made with these and see if it actually flies correctly because who knows, maybe I didn't make it correctly. So let's bring up, uh, ooh, boy, where there it is, the Eskandar Aerospace Plane. Which, yes, clear the runway, let's just get all those guys back in, and then test out this plane where I used, oh boy, which cockpit was it that I used there? Ah, yes, the SH-3, my favorite, as well as the really cool B-1 bay. I really do love that each of these doors is individually controllable. It's just a nice little feature to add in and for if you're making a helicopter or some sort of cargo plane is quite nice. We then, of course, do also have the cargo bay right here, the uh, fuselage ramp, which doesn't quite go all the way down because of the choice of lander legs that I chose because of, well, the propellers I picked. Now, considering the game does now have things like rotors and robotics, we could actually make something akin to an Osprey, but I did not. I just made it a fixed wing thing. So let's uh, light these engines up and take off. And with this plane, which is actually quite light, yeah, we can already take off. It um, doesn't take a lot for this one because these engines are pretty darn good. And all in all, the parts in this mod are just pretty pretty great. They're all wonderful quality. It's cool seeing these stock-like versions of older Cold War aircraft, and they just add in a lot of fun new options into the game for you to enjoy. So if you would like to have a look at this mod for yourself, which I would certainly recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that, my friends, is going to be it for today's episode. I hope you have enjoyed. You do come back for the next one. Until that time, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one!